Steins Gate Zero isn't a bad anime, but it is the worst kind of sequel because it doesn't understand Steins Gate. It doesn't understand the characters, it doesn't understand the main themes, and it doesn't understand the point of the original story. The first thing I need you to understand about Steins Gate is that every character but Okabe and Koresu are flat, stereotypical tropes. They're extremely well-written, nuanced tropes, but the reason they are tropes is that they never evolve. But this isn't a bad thing. Far from it. It's an integral part of what makes Steins Gate so great. Fedes spends all day hiding behind this silly, bullshit persona, but when things get serious, she bares her heart, stops saying Nyan, and finally lets herself cry. She realizes she's been living in a dream this whole time, and that she needs to go back to her real life in the real world, away from the loving arms of her father. It's a very jarring, sudden shift in her character. But here's the important part. Her character doesn't change. She simply shows us who she really was all along. Even after losing her father again, she doesn't change. She merely gains an acceptance of the world and her life and a newfound confidence to take on the challenges it gives her. Suzaha, on a mission from the future, stops by in 2010 to find her father. She's about to give up, but Okabe convinces her to stay. And so we get to see this whole new side of her, finally able to relax away from war and away from her identity as a soldier. But just like Ferris, she hasn't changed. This was Suzaha the entire time. She merely lets herself relax, accepting her temporary reality and allowing herself to enjoy the fleeting peace of the present. Ruka gets to have a date with Okabe. One day to remember the time he was a girl, when he could finally express his feelings. But what he learns is that it changed nothing. His relationship with Okabe is exactly the same as it was when he was a boy, and that's exactly what he loves about him. And seeing just how similar this alternate reality is, he's able to accept the relationship for what it is. But wait a second, King of Weeaboos, I hear you saying. Aren't you describing the characters growing and changing? Not quite. There's a difference between acceptance and change. Take Moika, for example. In the end, she's still completely dysfunctional and can't really talk without her cell phone. But, and this is the important part, she's on the precipice of change. She's finally able to accept herself as she is and try to begin a normal life, and we see her character looking forward for the very first time. When we look at her, or any of the other characters, we see the potential for change. Steinsgate ends on an optimistic note, looking forward into this unknown future full of possibilities. And so the fact that these characters never change is an extremely integral part of the story. This is exactly why Daru and Suzaha's relationship is so important. Daru is this fat, gross otaku who couldn't get laid to save his life. And yet, here is living proof that not only did he get laid in the future, he fathered a child. Their relationship in the present being so awkward and out of place gives us a glimpse into this wild, unknown future. And so it's meaningful because Daru never changes, rather than in spite of it. And even though the characters never change, that doesn't mean there isn't weight behind each of their stories. The difference is that all of the nuance comes from Okabe as he takes on the burden of everyone's sacrifices. This is the point of Mayuri's character. She doesn't change because Okabe needs her not to. She's the one that understands Okabe more than anyone and understands how he changes over the course of Steinsgate. She's the one that slaps him in the face and brings him back to reality because she's been the one constant in his life. She is the absolute that Okabe's character is founded on and the person he cares for the most. And so it's not just that Ferris has to give up her father. It's that she gives him up for Mayuri. And so Okabe feels not just the burden of Mayuri's life, but Ferris's father's life as well. And the burden of Ruka's happiness, of Moika and Suzaha's lives, of Mr. Brown and his daughter's life, and especially Kurisu's life. Everyone's future is on his shoulders and he gives it all up for Mayuri. This sweet, innocent little girl and the loneliest one of them all. 
Everyone's stories are so heartfelt, so moving, so human on their own, but being placed on Okobe's shoulders makes all the difference in the world. We watch as he takes on everyone's hopes and dreams and battles alone against the universe, alone against fate, because he can never be anything but alone. And the tragedy at the heart of it all is that the one person who's always there for him, the one person who he loves, the one person who he could ever love, is the one person he has to let die. It's the way it focuses every story through Okabe that it turns from a series of sad stories into a masterpiece, and in my humble opinion, the single greatest, most heart-wrenching story ever written. So what does Steinsgate Zero do wrong? Well, for starters, it removes both Okabe and Kurisu and tries to tell the story without them, as if they weren't the two pillars holding up Steinsgate. And then it takes the side characters and their stories and changes them in ways that don't really make sense and even ruin the story in extremely big ways. Okay, so first, as we just established, and I have an entire video about this, so feel free to watch it if you need convincing, Steins Gate is about loneliness. It's about a bunch of lonely girls with daddy issues and one lonely anime daddy with a time machine. Everything that happens in Steins Gate happens because it's about a bunch of lonely otaku who just need some friends. It's about Okabe's struggle alone against the universe because he alone has the power to change fate. So there's this scene in Steins Gate Zero when Okabe picks up the phone and it's his mom on the other end and it immediately shatters this vision of a lonely lab that the original worked so hard to build up. Like what is this? There's absolutely no reason to introduce his mom as a character. She's irrelevant to any of the themes in Steins Gate and actively undermines almost all of them. She just brings in questions that the story isn't equipped to answer, like why does Okabe spend 100% of his time in his stupid lab if he has a normal home with a loving family? Introducing his mom completely ruins the point of the story. Similarly, Kurisu isn't even in the story anymore, but they still manage to ruin her character with her lolly fanservice replacement. Like Okabe and everyone else, Kurisu is scared and alone. She's haunted by the knowledge that she is, in another world line, dead. She's haunted by the idea that she doesn't belong in the world, that her existence is a lie that should not be. And it's this loneliness, this sense of not belonging, that's at the very heart of her character. This is why it's so important for her to have her own spoon. She's Japanese, but lives in America. Her dad lives in Japan, but won't acknowledge her. So Japan doesn't feel like home to her, and neither does America, but the lab could be, because the lab is the one place she doesn't have to feel alone. So the introduction of Maho just takes this idea and throws it out the fucking window. Like, what's this? She's had a friend and rival at her school and work this entire time? She's not lonely? What? Not only does this mean she was clearly never lonely, but Maho is fucking Japanese, so she wouldn't even really feel the effects of culture shock. Was I the only one that was paying attention to the story of Steinsgate? I feel like this is some pretty basic shit, dude. Remember how Daru and Suzaha's relationship does doesn't really work and that's the whole point. It's creepy and uncomfortable because it's supposed to be a reflection of the future, of a reality so unfathomably far removed from their current life in Akihabara. And Steinsgate Zero thinks the important part is that it's creepy and uncomfortable, so they make it more creepy and uncomfortable, and it's just weird. Like not only would I obviously not want to see this, it's completely missing the point. Then there's Mayuri. Mayuri actually confesses her love for Okabe midway through the show. Now, that's fine in concept, as this was kind of implied, and obviously also one of the endings in the original visual novel. But, um, here's the thing. Why is she edgy? She turns from this sweet, innocent girl who is maybe even a little too special to feel this way about him, and now she's this selfish edgelord, and it's like, huh? Where did this come from? Where did the autism go? Did she get reverse vaccinated or something? The point of Mayuri's character is that she's Okabe's North Star, a light to guide him in dark places when all other lights go out. So her turning into this selfish edgelord is, and I'm being extremely generous here, missing the fucking point. Ruka in particular has been 
eviscerated for the sole purpose of fanservice. The entire point of his character is that he had no confidence in his body, and it's only when he gets to experience being a girl and go on a date with Okabe that he realizes that it wouldn't change anything, and that Okabe doesn't even care if he's a boy or a girl. And so even if he got these memories from reading Steiner, that still doesn't make sense because what he learns is that he's perfectly fine exactly the way he is. And so instead he's this overconfident turbo milf ninja trap waifu and it's like, where the fuck did this come from? He's his literal fan service opposite and has absolutely no relation to what he was before. Here's the thing, characters change over time, but in Steins Gate, they don't. The point is, they don't change until after the story ends when they're able to fully realize that their life in the present and who they are as a person is enough. And so, in Steins Gate Zero, not only does it throw away this entire concept, they are all changed to be their exact fanservice opposites with these completely random new issues that are contradictory to their old selves. Mayuri goes from sweet, autistic girl to loud, selfish edgelord. Daru and Suzaha go from laughably uncomfortable to actually disturbing. Ruka goes from shy, innocent trap to badass milf ninja waifu, and instead of Kurisu, we have her two fetish fanservice counterparts. This is not character development. They just took some of the most real, believable characters ever written and turned them into their literal fanservice opposites. That's not how people change. Steinsgate understood how people change. This is how fan fiction works by screwing with the characters for random fan service purposes. I cannot overstate just how much this sequel is the embodiment of fan service, and Kurisu gets the worst of it. The only reason Maho is here is for fan service purposes. Her character is literally just Kurisu if Kurisu were a lolly. She completely ruins Kurisu's character just so they could add in a lolly. Now, before you jump out of your seat and scream at me that that can't be true because not everyone likes lollies, first, this is Japan, but also remember what Kagari's character is in there for. Kagari looks like Kurisu 4, and this is 100% true, reasons. It's literally an unsolved plot point that she looks like Kurisu, and so instead of Kurisu, we have Lolly Kurisu and Kurisu with bigger tits. And this isn't even mentioning VTuber Kurisu. VTuber Kurisu is just a snapshot of her point in time, so hmm, how do I explain this? She's Kurisu, but with none of the character development. Her development is gaining some of the memories from the other world line, and so she is quite literally, just an opportunity to be able to slam some Christina's into the script. Christina. She just repeats the exact same thing as in the original, and so not only does her character literally not go anywhere new, it's completely ruined by the existence of actual new Kurisu, aka Maho. So speaking of not going anywhere new, let's take a look at the story structure as a whole. The story is basically, when will Okabe stop being this shitty edgelord and start being the character we actually like? And to me, to me that's not much of a story, that's the fanservice version of edging. Think about what the story's high points are, there's two. There's Kurisu running back to the lab to tell Okabe she loves him, and there's Okabe getting into the time machine to truly become Ho in Kyoma and enter Steinsgate. Now, what's wrong with this? Right, that's right, that's right. The problem is that these are literally the two high points in the original story. What? It's the exact same fucking story, only missing both of the things that made the original so great in the first place. Whose idea was this, and how did that not seem dumb to you when you first came up with it? Now, I got a lot of comments saying how it's super epic when he finally becomes Ho and Kyuma and gets in the time machine, and to be clear, it is epic, it's super epic. But, but the reason it's so epic is that it's literally just the exact same moment from the original story that we all know and love. Steins Gate Zero was just edging you along to this moment, and now that you finally get to see it, you think it's awesome. That's not storytelling. That's porn. And while everything I've mentioned is about the characters, so both the anime and the visual novel, I also specifically hate the visual novel. I played it before it even came out. As the world's greatest Steinsgate fan, when I heard they were making a new Steinsgate, I could not wait. I haunted Reddit until the second a fan translation came out and played through the entire thing and every ending in a weekend. And what I discovered was betrayal because it's honestly 
pretty bad. And to illustrate why it's so bad, I actually need to talk about the original visual novel. So if you've never played it, bear with me for a sec. In every ending but the true ending, Okabe is never triumphant over time and space. He gives in to the idea that fate isn't something he has the power to control and lets himself take comfort in what he has. He never once faces victory nor defeat, merely a melancholic truce with the universe. This is really, really powerful. His enemy, his only true enemy, is never anything but himself, and that's what makes the loneliness of Okabe's story all the more profound, and the anime captures this feeling perfectly. In the Mayuri ending, he can't solve anything but lets himself be content with the knowledge that Mayuri is safe. Kurisu is gone, but at least this precious girl's life is spared. In the Rukako ending, they settle down and conceive a child and give Mayuri's life up to the hands of fate. In the Ferris ending, he arrives in a world line without the laboratory, without the phone wave, and without his friends, and finds a new life as a Rainet champion with Ferris, content with the knowledge that his loved ones are safe. In the Suzaha ending, he resolves to save his friends by living for eternity in a time loop, reliving the same two days over and over and over, which slowly beats the humanity out of him until Suzaha eventually notices there's something wrong with him and snaps him out of it, and brings him back to 1975 with her, and he abandons his friends with the knowledge that each of them will at least be alive without him. The only real conflict Steinsgate ever has is between Okabe himself and the universe. It is never anything tangible, and that's why this is the greatest story ever told. His imaginary organization, which turns out to be CERN in an amazing twist of irony, is never the true antagonist of Steinsgate. Okabe's despair, his loneliness, is all the more powerful because the only thing that's ever fighting against him is the universe itself. Whereas in Steinsgate Zero, it's basically just like, hey, the enemy is Leskinen, the Russians, it's all these people fighting over technology, cool, right? No, no it's not. This is entirely missing the point of Steinsgate. Steinsgate is above all that shit. Steinsgate is above the petty squabbles of mere mortals. It's about the crushing insignificance of of existing in the universe and the perverse loneliness of the human mind. Steins Gate Zero basically feels like fanfiction written by people who didn't understand Steins Gate. Competently written fanfiction no doubt, but confused fanfiction nonetheless. It doesn't understand the characters, it doesn't understand the main themes, and it doesn't understand the point of the story. And so it completely ruins Steins Gate. Now, I wanna be clear. Steins Gate Zero is not the worst anime ever made, far from it. It's at the very least competent, the dialogue is well written enough, and it has enough intrigue to keep you hooked until the end. But the thing is, Steins Gate Zero does not exist in a vacuum, it's supposed to be a sequel to Steins Gate. No, it's worse than that, it's supposed to be part of the original story, and that's why it ruins Steins Gate rather than just being a disappointing sequel. And to say that this, this thing, Steinsgate Zero, is Steinsgate, is blasphemy to me. And I hate it. I say ruins, lol. Truthfully, Steinsgate is such a triumphant work of art that nothing could ever truly ruin it, although Steinsgate Zero certainly tries its fucking best. I'm gonna make a video about what makes anime true art rather than just entertainment, but what I want you to understand is that art has its own voice. Art has its own ideas, its own voice, and its own things to say separate from that of the authors. And so the fact that Steins Gate Zero, despite being written by literally the same people, is so detached and derivative of Steins Gate is the very embodiment of this idea. Steins Gate is more than the sum of what went into it. It has a voice so loud and so profound that for me, it defines art. It is the voice of a generation, the voice of anime, the voice of art, and the greatest story ever told. Yeah, fuck you Christians, you don't get to use that title anymore. I don't care what you believe, just as long as you recognize that Steins Gate is objectively the greatest story ever told. So I hope I manage to make you see what I see, I really do, because I want everyone to be able to appreciate the magic of Steins Gate, 
just as much as I do. If there is anything you want to say, anything you don't understand about Steinsgate or Steinsgate Zero, please feel free to leave a comment and we can talk about it. Thank you so much for your time, friends, and I hope to see you again. If you'd like me, the King of Weeaboos, to help you understand your other favorite anime, please consider checking out my playlist right here. Thanks again for watching, friends, and I will see you next time.